Hey guys, welcome to episode 7 of Mask of the Slasher. Uh, the title of this week's episode is Late to the Party, and what we mean by that is movies that we didn't see when they came out, um, we discovered them later on, so hence we were late to the party of seeing these movies and enjoying them. Um, the first movie that I want to talk about is Late Phases. Uh, this movie was released in 2014. It was directed by Adrian Garcia Bogliano. Um, and it's a werewolf movie. Um, it stars Nick DiMici, who is fantastic as the main character, Ambrose. He's just a salty old man, and I love salty old man characters. Um, because a... you are one. <laughs> I don't think I am. Okay. But anyway, he's a Vietnam veteran who has uh, since gone blind. Uh, his son, who's played by Ethan Embry, they don't have a very good relationship, and uh, his son kind of forcibly moves him into a retirement community. Uh, it's sort of like condominiums or duplexes, basically. And um, uh, his first night there, um, his neighbor gets attacked by a werewolf. He kind of goes to see what's going on. He also gets attacked. His dog, he has a seeing-eye dog that defends him, but unfortunately gets killed. So I always like to warn people when dogs get killed in movies, <laughs> if that bothers you. It's, it's pretty brief and not very graphic, but the dog does get killed at the beginning of the movie. Um, from there, he kind of starts to he starts to investigate and starts to suspect what's going on. So he's trying to figure out um, who the werewolf is and how he can stop uh, what's going on. Uh, so I don't want to spoil a lot of this one for you because I want you to go out and see it uh, if you haven't already. Um, but and again, it's just a very well made movie. Um, the performances are really good. Um, again, Nick DiMici is fantastic in it. And I was trying, you know, thinking about this, trying to figure out where I started my love of salty old man characters. And I think it, uh, two things that come to mind. I think one, obviously, Quint from Jaws, uh, seeing that at a young age, uh, endeared that character to me. And then also um, the graphic novel, The Dark Knight Returns, which is about uh, Batman in the future coming out of retirement. Because obviously he has no superpowers, so he gets old, unlike, say, Superman or Wonder Woman. And he's very <laughs> he's very grouchy throughout the entire thing. And I think that's kind of what uh, made me like those types of characters, kind of planted the seeds when I was a kid. Um, so again, this movie, yes, it's a werewolf movie. The werewolves look fantastic in it. But it's actually also about uh, the main character, you know, kind of trying to regain his dignity, I think. And that's something that, you know, I think happens to a lot of people as they get older. Um, so the title Late Phases kind of has a double meaning because obviously it refers to the phases of the moon, but it also refers to the later phases of life. Um, so it's a very Ooh. good movie in that it's, yeah, <laughs> in that it's, you know, it's a werewolf movie and the special effects are cool, but it's also very character driven. Um, Tom Noonan is also in it in a supporting role who he's probably best known as uh, playing Francis Dollarhide in um, Manhunter, which was the original film adaptation of red dragon and if you've never seen that movie you should go check it out but hopefully i'll find an excuse to talk about that movie some more in a later on episode i personally have uh only seen bits and pieces of this movie i'm not a huge werewolf fan for or zombies or there, there's certain things i just don't watch and i think i remember the dog being killed and i think that's when i walked away probably yeah, it, that's just not something I can handle. I know it's not real, blah, 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 but still, I can't handle it. Yeah, I don't, I don't, that part is hard for me to watch still, too, but I'm thankful that it happens at the beginning, yeah. <laughs> so you get it over with, and then the well, rest of the movie is just really good after that. And it's that. a way to make him more helpless. Exactly, yeah, because, I mean, that's kind of part of the whole thing is, you know, it really shows um, when he's trying to kind of prepare for the, you know, he knows these werewolves are going to attack again. Mm. And it shows him preparing for it, and he's, you know, he's having to figure out how many steps it is to certain parts of his house and things like that. So it really kind of shows him struggling, you know, to kind of take on this situation that he finds himself in. Yeah. What I'm going to talk about, um, we each have two movies, so as usual, but um, I'm going to talk about The Changeling. Uh, this is not the changeling with angelina jolie or any of the other 12 versions of that particular <laughs> movie there's a new one coming oh, really? out that's i didn't even watch the preview because i'm like this has nothing to do with right. this particular changeling this movie came out in 1980 and the director was peter medic um and it stars george c scott Woo! Yes. and 
Um, I didn't see this movie until... I, it, I don't know the exact date, but I want to say within the last five years. It was just something that you would just flip through your various streaming services. And it kept coming up, and I was like, you know what? Let's just... I'm just going to watch it. Whatever. And I was so glad that I watched this movie that I went out and purchased the worst looking dvd ever it's super hard to find on on yeah. in media form by the way yeah and i just happened to find it probably at like amoeba or rasputin's one of those yeah out and about or maybe dimple or one. zia's possibly or zia's, i can't yeah. remember one of one the of, many record stores we've frequented yes. throughout our lives together yeah we've we've moved a lot so yes. Um, what this movie is about um, is a gentleman who is a music professor, and him and his wife and his daughter, um, they're on a trip somewhere out in the snow, probably to go skiing or something like that. I, I don't think they ever really indicate what yeah. they're doing. And they get a flat tire, and so they pull off, and just by chance there happened to be a payphone across the way you know there's usually lots of pay phones <laughs> right in, in the middle of nowhere yeah. yeah yeah so um the daughter and mom are across the way just playing together trying to occupy their time while he goes over to the conveniently placed pay phone <laughs> to call for a tow truck and while he's there doing that uh somebody veers off the road and and kills the mother and the daughter so obviously horrible Mm -hmm. horrible horrible mm -hmm. so they basically end it with that he's packing up his life in that whatever town he's in i right. don't remember um and he decides to move just i think it was completely across the country yeah i believe so yeah yeah and he's gonna be a music professor at a college wherever he ends up but like i said i i didn't i don't care about these details it doesn't matter <laughs> Um, but he ends up renting a home, and I w I've always wished I've had this experience in home rentals, where they're just like, oh, here's a historic home <laughs> that is pretty much a mansion. It was more like a chateau, really. Yeah. And uh, it's all yours. Right. You know, and so that's what he does, and it was amazing. And But he starts to have some experiences within the house, and the only thing that he kept of his daughter's was this one red ball. It's just a small handheld ball, and that ball starts to appear mm -hmm. and move around the house. And then usually when a red ball appears in a movie, it's a child playing mm -hmm. with it. It's right. an ongoing theme. Um, so anyway, so he's, he's basically helping unravel a story. I'm not going to give everything away, because if you haven't seen it, definitely go see it. Um, but he's unraveling a story about this ghost mm -hmm. this child ghost and this movie was so good and eerie mm -hmm. surprisingly mm -hmm. and george c scott just has a way of his acting style is very he's got very sarcastic mm -hmm. but to the point mm -hmm. you know there's there's something about him when he was in the exorcist 3 when i got yeah. to watch that i was just like yeah there's something about him but yeah, I I definitely recommend this movie. Um, I wish I had seen it sooner, but I'm glad that I saw it when I did. Mm -hmm. And now it's it watched at least once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. um, if it just happens to be on some random channel that we have, I will watch it. Right. So definitely a good movie. Yeah, it's a slow burn. I will say that. So you know you you have to have patience with it. I think. Um, but I also think that George C. Scott makes it so compelling with his performance mm. that it's very easy to have that patience yeah. because certain actor, actors just have a presence about them and he's one of them. I feel like you could probably could have recorded him reading out of the phone book and it would have been yeah good to watch. You know what I mean? He's just one of those actors. So Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, with the slow burn part of it, I normally I, I have an attention span of a fly these days, as a lot of people do. And so, and if I get comfy on a couch and start watching a movie, I will fall asleep. That's, mm -hmm. I'm just old. And, um, this movie, it held my attention the entire time. And for something that was made during that time frame where a lot of movies were a slow burn at mm -hmm. the beginning and then 
just suddenly things start just going crazy. Mm -hmm. You have to be patient with these movies at this time. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, so, two thumbs up for Yeah, me. it's a very compelling depiction of grief and frustration and it's all these different emotions that he goes through as he's trying to, you know, restructure his life, basically, and then gets thrown into this situation. So, really good movie. Um, yeah, masterpiece, I think, honestly. Yeah, yeah, it does. I don't <laughs> think it gets enough credit, to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah. The next movie that I'm going to talk about is We Are Still Here. Uh, it's released in 2015, directed by Ted Gagan, um, and also stars Barbara Crampton, who is in Reanimator and The Beyond and Puppet Master and a bunch of other cool movies. She's been in a ton of uh, things, classic Scream Queen. Uh, but um, it's about an older couple that moves into a house. Things start to happen. They believe it's their son, uh, who recently passed away, that's trying to communicate with them. Turns out it's a ghost story of a whole other nature, and once again, this is something where I'm not going to spoil it for you. Uh, but just I'll say that, uh, you know, the small town that they're in is keeping a secret that's very dark, and they start to unravel it as things go on. Um, this is just a little independent movie that's super well made, and all the performances are really good in it. The special effects are really cool. It's a very different take on ghosts. Yeah. Which I think is very cool, and I'm, again, not going to spoil that either. <laughs> Some yeah. of these movies that are newer, it's a little harder to talk about, I think, because, I, like I said, I don't want to give it away. I want you to go see this movie. Um, it's just really well made. Um, again, the performances are super compelling throughout it. The effects are good. It looks a lot... It looks a lot better than what you'd expect from a little uh, low-budget, independent yeah. ghost story type movie. Um yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't want to say too much about it because <laughs> I don't want to give it away for people. No, it is an amazing movie. I have watched it a couple times. Um, and it shocked me how good it was. Mm -hmm. And what's the gentleman's name that was in both Late Phases and this uh, movie? Oh, Larry Fessenden, yeah. He only has a little bit of a cameo in Late Phases, but yeah, he has a bigger part in We Are Still Here. He's been in a lot of stuff. He has been, yeah. And um, his role in this is, he he does a great job. Oh, yeah, he's excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I definitely recommend this movie. It, it just has such a good storyline and just good everything. Once again, can't say too much because it will give it away. Yeah. Um, but definitely recommend going and seeing this. I think it's still on streaming. Yeah, I believe it's on, I want to say it's either on Netflix or on Amazon. <laughs> Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, I should probably say that both of these movies, both We Are Still Here and Late Phases, I just found them by going down, you know, streaming rabbit holes, essentially. Mm -hmm. You know, just uh, just uh, looking through movies, trying to find something I hadn't seen type situation. You know, whereas with Changeling, I mean, we I think we'd both heard of it and just never had, had the opportunity or yeah. uh, means to check well, it out. And I think it might have actually been on one of those countdown things mm. that was on shutter yeah. or amc mm -hmm. one of those and we that's how we do our homework sometimes and we watch those things even though we've seen a good majority of it mm -hmm. we, we actually are dorks and write notes yeah like oh I, we haven't seen that yet yeah and, you know, and, one of us will plot our phone or a pad of paper yeah because <laughs> we're super weird because we're nerds yeah um <laughs> The last movie we're going to talk about is The Devil's Candy that came out in 2015 and was directed by Sean Byrne. Uh, this movie, we just watched this last year. We happened to come across this movie when looking uh, just through streaming channels and that kind of thing. And I usually sway away from movies that say something about the devil or something like that. Um, strictly because it can be so corny. Mm -hmm. Um Full disclosure, I'm atheist, so things about the devil and that kind of thing um, can either irritate me or just don't, they don't do it for me. Right. No, nothing scares me anymore. Right. Um, that's why The Exorcist doesn't scare me anymore. It's more like a warm blanket. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love watching that movie on any day of the week. Anyway, so um, The Devil's Candy is an interesting story. It's a young couple with a teenage daughter. They they had to have had their daughter at very young. Mm. Um, and they kind of just throw caution to the wind and buy this house. Uh, the husband is an artist, a struggling artist, a painter. 
And the entire family is really into heavy metal. Mm -hmm. And which is very, it was a very different soundtrack for us. Yes. Um, and so that definitely adds to the ambiance of it. So anyway, so he's a struggling painter. And um, he, they have like a barn and that's where he's going to have his studio. That's, that's what was decided. Mm -hmm. So he's out there painting and whatever. And he just starts going into a trance. And some say possessed. They use that word or whatever. But mm -hmm. he's not with it. Yeah. He's blacked out essentially. Mm -hmm. And he's just painting. And uh, once again, not something I'm going to explain what he's painting. Because right. that gives away the whole story. Yes. Um, but I have to say... Uh, these movies that have these paintings in them, every single time, I'm like, gosh, I really wish this painting would <laughs> be it, for sale it, yeah, somewhere. Actually existed somewhere. Yeah, yeah, because it's so cool. Mm -hmm. Um, that one, uh, the newest Candyman, there was some great art in it that was painted. By far my favorite is the painting in The Beyond. That, oh yeah that becomes you know a real thing and, mm -hmm. and they're walking into it it's right. just oh it's so desolate and yes. eerie so anyway um this movie i i definitely recommend uh as far as it having a great story it's kind of amityville ish yeah. in the fact that it's a young family and they put every dime that they have into this house and so they're kind of stuck there mm -hmm. um but it's a, a good story of survival, mm -hmm. and there's just a, some creepy characters in it. There's a there's a big dude that just keeps showing up. <laughs> yeah, he's the former uh, yeah. resident of the yes, house. Yes, yeah, and he, it's not what you would anticipate. A guy in a tracksuit is not <laughs> usually very scary, yeah. um, but this guy is. Yeah. Like I mentioned before, they this family is into heavy metal. So, and Josh and I have a thing where we're listening to something and we'll go, what what is that from? Who is that that's playing? And I'll use something like Shazam on my phone or something to figure it out. Or Josh just knows it because he's got a steel trap of useless knowledge of music in there. So, um, we discovered that it is... What are they called? What is their genre? Sun? Yeah. Uh, doom. Okay. It's like we'll just go Drone or Doom, yeah. Yeah. Sun, and um, for the metal community, most people know who this is. Sun is just very... It's Doom riffs played as slowly as humanly possible. Yes. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> so, it, it, and I was sitting there thinking, why haven't they used these guys for other horror movies? Mm -hmm. Because... The ambiance that that music gives to this, it's not fast-paced in any way. It's more like a score. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it fit perfectly with this yes. movie. Um, I don't know. What do you have to say about um, it? I would just say a couple things about this movie. One, I appreciate as a lifelong metalhead, I appreciated that metal was treated in such a respectful way. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm sure, you know, I don't know anything really about the director or anything, but I'm assuming he must be a metal fan. I think I read it somewhere. Um, it was a blurp, but yeah. It because was about it. one thing that has always frustrated me about movies in general, really, is that movies that have a metalhead character, it's always he's a goofball or he's mm -hmm. a or he's a slacker or he's a, a loser stoner. or a stoner. Yeah. It's like... It was so great to see like a just a regular family mm -hmm. who happened to like heavy metal and and see the music treated so respectfully and that these people that liked metal were not goofballs yeah. or stoners or yeah. losers you know and there wasn't some great emphasis on it but mm -hmm. it stood out to us because we're metal fans right so it the fact that what he's saying is that you know not making fun of metal mm -hmm. heads yep. you know like they do in stranger things yep. or things like that where they just make us look like complete idiots yes um they used it properly they used mm -hmm. the music properly mm -hmm. in this movie yes so i think they i think they did a good job of it yeah and then i would also just say ethan Embry's performance was really good um and i think it's cool he was also in late phases so a lot of our movies oh, are was. tied together oh. here, yeah. <laughs> Way to go on that late career resurgence, Ethan Embry. We yeah. salute you, man. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> so all of these movies, um, as we've mentioned, they are something that we've stumbled across, just learned about late in mm-hmm. its movie life. Yep. Um, and part of the reason this happened, I will say, is because of the pandemic. Oh, yeah. Uh, once we had the shutdown, as everybody had this problem where what do you do with yourself? And people Mm -hmm. started making bread (laughs) and buying dogs. You know, um, I did make bread at some point. I will admit, (laughs) I I totally made some bread. At first you're like, oh, it's it's great. You know, you get to work from home and you get to relax and be in your pajamas and watch TV and do whatever you want, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Well, that gets old really fast. Yes. So... We started to subscribe to a lot of different streaming services. Netflix, we even had Paramount Plus at one point. We already had Amazon, of course. Mm, Netflix, everything, yeah. Um, Shudder, we've had um, Hulu. And then, of course, regular cable. At the time, we did have regular cable. We do not now. Uh, So... Being able to go through all of those streaming channels and looking for something to watch, you start to run out of some stuff. And you start going, whatever, let's just give it a shot, you know, and you just do. You just give it a shot. And there's been some duds. Oh, yeah. There's been some that we've shut off within at least the first 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. If I look over and Josh is looking at his phone already, I kind of know what's happening. Um, So that is how we have found stuff. Um, And we recommend it to anybody else if you hadn't already had to do that. That is how you just throw caution to the wind. You just need to take a dive and see what's out there and keep an open mind. Um, because you never know. You never know what you're going to find. Right. And uh, we, we've found some pretty amazing movies over mm-hmm. these last years. This is still what we do is use streaming services to find movies. Um, the only one we cannot find for the life of us yeah. is... Was it called? Talk to me. Talk to me. Yeah. Please talk to us <laughs> and tell us where we can stream this movie for free. Because everything is, it's on Apple TV or Amazon, but we have to pay for it. Yeah, it's like, well, we're already paying for that service. We should just be able to watch these things. You know, I mean, that's kind of our take on it. It's like, if I'm already paying a monthly fee, I should have access to what everything you've got to offer. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? So, yeah. um, Yeah. Yeah. I agree with what Krista says 100%. Don't be afraid. You know, if one thing we've learned is don't be afraid to take a chance on something, yes, you will run into duds. You'll run into a lot of duds, probably, yeah. but when you find a movie like Late Phases or you find a movie like Changeling, it makes it worth it because mm-hmm. now those, you know, some of these rank among our favorite movies now, and it was well worth doing that digging. I think we'd love to know what what streaming services that you have found work best for you. Um, we have noticed Netflix has taken a nosedive in horror movies, mm, and yeah. we're not the only ones that have noticed this. I have actually seen memes about yeah. this recently <laughs> yeah. where and it used to be Netflix was the go-to. Oh yeah, absolutely. They had amazing movies mm-hmm. and Amazon, they have some pretty off movies mm-hmm. I went in a lot of older stuff. Yeah. Um, Cause another one that we watched was dead and buried. Right. And that was a great movie. Mm-hmm. Um, or my bloody Valentine. I had never seen that before. Right. And those we had found, I think, I think most of them were on Amazon. Yeah. Um, we did have Shutter, mm-hmm. and we have shuttered it yeah. since. <laughs> we watched everything that we would want to watch on it. Yeah. It, just, it got to a point where they, the movies were not interesting the, anymore. Yeah, and the uh, the hit to uh, dud ratio was starting to tilt in favor of duds. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like at that point you kind of like. Yeah, I, you didn't see a point of pain. I, for I it. think Amazon Video, Prime Video, is kind of like a kind of getting slept on personally because mm-hmm. there's a lot of good horror movies out there. Um, you know, you know. Adjacently, I will say I found that there's a bunch of cool like Japanese stuff out th- on there, like Kamen Rider and Ultraman and all this stuff. So a lot of people who like horror movies probably like some of that stuff too. So I I find that 
Lately. Not me. Not, me. <laughs> Not Krista, but a lot of a lot of nerdy dudes like me. Yeah. <laughs> I find that there's a wealth of, of of you know if you like if you're as nerdy as I am and you like horror and you like sci-fi and you like all these different things you might you're gonna find a bunch of stuff on Amazon Prime Video. I think. Yeah. I think you'll be surprised because I never really I was kind of like hey Amazon whatever but lately I've been kind of doing some deep dives into Amazon and finding a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think that's even where I saw the changeling. Mm -hmm. I think that's where it came up. Yeah. Um, Peacock, surprisingly, has had some good stuff here and there, a sprinkle or two. Peacock does have a sprinkle, but it's a lot of movies that, what I would, ref well, in my family, we refer to them as Bill Cosgriff specials, after my grandfather, who was the king of B-movies and also C and D movies. <laughs> <laughs> the man would watch anything sci-fi or horror and, whew, some doozies, let me tell you. So... <laughs> Those, yeah, so there's a lot of those kind of movies on Peacock, but yeah. there are some good ones as well, for sure. And Hulu's kind of a sprinkle, too. It's it's here and there, but it's... it's eh. Yes. And um, the other one is uh, HBO or Max or whatever you want to call it right now. Mm -hmm. We've got some good stuff on there as well. Yeah. Um, but that's the extent of where we have found stuff. Now that we don't have video stores anymore... Yeah, unfortunate. Miss video stores. Mm -hmm. There was a fantastic one over in Des Moines. A video warehouse, yes. Which we referred to as Video Horror House. Yeah. <laughs> and that was actually my grandfather. I don't remember how many... They figured out how many... They had kept his record of how many movies he had rented. And I don't remember how many it was, but it was literally in the thousands. Really? By the time, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was an amazing video store. It went on forever. Yeah. It was the weirdest... It was a cool It was like place. a labyrinth yeah. of movies. Yeah, I mean, we weren't we weren't living in Des Moines any longer when that closed, but yeah. when I heard about it, I was just like, oh, end of an era, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And and as far as finding them for purchasing, it it is going to be used music stores. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, like we had mentioned, Rasputin's, Amoeba, Dimple, R.I.P. Yeah, Z is, if you're in the Las Vegas area or Arizona, definitely hit them up because they have an amazing... They have an amazing selection of movies and music, and everybody there is super nice. Yes. <laughs> they were not... They're not like the record, you know, the snobby record store employee. They're... No. Everybody... I never dealt with anybody bad there. They were all super nice. I was that person at one point. <laughs> I worked at many music stores. I was that person. I worked at where? The warehouse. <laughs> and, uh, and Tower and cd warehouse all of them and yeah. i was kind of a, a jerk <laughs> but yeah the, i mean there are movies that we have purchased where we have not seen them um we'll just look them up sometimes or whatever mm -hmm. and see if it's something of interest we've got a couple in here still in the cellophane that we haven't pulled out yet um, right but it will happen oh, and yeah. they're so cheap that it's worth it unless they're in like the special gold-plated criterion i don't i don't we can't even figure out what the criteria is for criterion <laughs> but um because uh, there's a, a store in portland what is it called music millennium yes and we were there just a few weeks ago for josh's birthday and they had a great horror selection so um do some searching look for some stuff out there you will find it uh, that's how I found the Changeling, you know, on DVD, which, mm -hmm. like I said, an ugly box. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, you never know what you're going to find. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, let us know where you guys find movies and let us know what movies had you slept on up until recently and were blown away by. I'd love to know what movies you guys were late to the party on as well. And we have noticed, uh, on another note, that our viewership has increased mm -hmm. significantly, so we want to thank you for that. Yes. But what we have noticed <laughs> is that although somebody has watched a video 74 times, we only have a few subscribers. And so we are asking for you to subscribe to our channel. Um, I promise we're not that annoying. We we don't <laughs> pop up constantly with little short things and no, all that. It's no, once a week. Once a week, every Monday. Yes. So if you know, you can be reminded on Monday morning 
when you know you have to start work and it's going to suck, yep. that you have an amazing <laughs> video to watch <laughs> later that afternoon or on your lunch break, you know, I mean, and share it with your friends, get the word out about it. I know that you hear this from every single channel, um, but we really do appreciate it. Yes, and especially since we're just getting things off the ground still, it means a lot uh, for the, to get that support. Yes, absolutely. So, until next time, thank you for watching. <laughs> Bye! Bye.